Nick Collection 8 by DxO includes some very exciting new features, most notably an incredible handling of masks. Not just masks made in the Nick Collection itself, but even integration of Photoshop masks. It also includes a significant UI and workflow enhancement to Silver Effects, a whole new way to mask in the Nick Collection, and a new Photoshop panel making it easier than ever to get to the tools and presets you like best. Let's dive in, starting with a new Photoshop panel. To first access the Nick Collection, go to the Plugins menu, then Nick Collection 8, and open the Preferences. That'll open this panel here, which can dock next to your tools in Photoshop. To explore this panel, along the top you have an icon to launch each one of the filters. Underneath that you have your preferences. The first choice defines what you're going to be opening when you open the plugin. Are you going to open a combination of all visible layers, or only the active layer? The default is a combination of all layers. If you're applying favorites from the launcher, which you would access from each individual plugin here, you can choose whether you want it to simply apply in Photoshop or to actually open up the Nick collection. And most importantly, you have a choice of what masks you want to send. Do you want to send all of the available masks, just the selected mask, or none at all? I'm going to leave it at the default of all masks. The ability to freely move masks between Photoshop and the Nick collection is remarkable. Let me show you a few examples. You can see here that I already have a few masks created in Photoshop. I'm going to select the top layer and jump into color effects. Remember that I already have selected in my preferences to send all masks. Let's do something really simple. I'm just going to apply a quick effect. I'll grab the black and white conversion from the filters list. And then here under local adjustments for the black and white filter, you'll see that I have all of my standard Nick masking tools, but there's a new button here that's my import tool. When I click that, it opens up a list of all of the masks that came over from Photoshop. And look, there's the monument and there's the statues. I'll go ahead and add the statues mask to this, and you can already see what it's done. If I reveal that mask, we're looking at the Photoshop generated mask of the statues and using that to localize the adjustments in the Nick collection. I'm going to add another effect and darken the sky. Let's go down to midnight and apply that. And then I'm going to use the control line tool to apply this just to the sky. If we look at the mask that that's created, that's what it looks like. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Now let's say I'm done with color effects and I want to move this over to analog effects. Up in the top right, I can choose to send this image to any of my other plugins. I'll choose analog effects, and now not only is the image going to be sent over there, but the masks are going with it. Let's add something really heavy to this picture. I'll add the photo plates to it. And the photo plates you can see is applying over the entire image, but maybe I want to scale it back a little bit over the monument itself. So I'll go to my photo plate filter, click on import masks, and now I'll import the Photoshop mask for the whole monument. Once that's been applied, and we can see that mask here, I'll take the texture strength and just dial it back a little bit where the monuments are. And you can see the effect that that's having. So now I'm done with my image and I want to send it back to Photoshop. But I might want to use that mask that I built in the sky in color effects later on in Photoshop. Well, I can save that and send it to Photoshop as a channel. Watch this. Under the Apply menu, I have the option under Include Plugin Masks to include whichever ones I want. In this case, I made just one new mask inside of Nick. That was that control line. So I'll select that and then click Apply. Now the effect is getting rendered out to Photoshop, and if I look at my channels, there's the control line mask, ready for me to use inside of Photoshop. Next up, the ability to export a TIFF or JPEG of your photo from the Nick plugin itself at any time isn't new, but it has been made easier, and I'll show you that. However, Nick Collection now has another trick, and that's to send a version of your photo back to Photoshop as a hidden layer. Check this out. Back in color effects, let's say I think I might be done with this image, but I'm not totally sure, so I want to save a copy of it. Up here I have a button called Export as JPEG. If I drop this down though, I can change that to TIFF just from here. And I can even jump into the preferences to change where it's going to be saved. I currently have it set to save to the desktop, and I'll leave it as JPEG. Now when I click on Export as JPEG, it does exactly that. And if we look at the desktop, we'll see my photo exported there. The new option though is down here at the bottom, and it's called Send as Layer. When I click that, it'll send it out as a hidden layer in Photoshop. So now I can go about changing something else in here. Let's just apply a whole other preset. Go ahead and apply this. And now back in Photoshop, we can see the completed version that I just did, and above that, a hidden version of the one that I saved. You may have used the brushing feature before, where you create a look in the Nick collection, and then brush that look into your Photoshop image. Now when you choose that option, Nick creates a Photoshop layer of your new image, and a Photoshop mask already applied to it. 
so you can immediately start brushing the effect in using Photoshop's traditional tools. This way you get access to all of Photoshop's brushing tools, and of course you can make a change to it at any time. Watch. Say I've created this pretty heavy look in Nick Analog Effects, and I may not want the entire look on the entire image. So now I can choose New Layer with Mask, and then apply that. And what we get back in Photoshop is that layer rendered out with a mask already applied to it, and that's a negative mask. What this means is I can take my brush tool, set to white, and now brush that effect in. So this allows me much more control than I had before. By simply brushing in the Photoshop mask, I can adjust the effect very precisely between the two layers. Nick Collection has always been about making complex masks, from the original control point up to the latest tools like the control polygon added in the previous version. In Nick 8, there's another new mask type called Color Mask. We'll look at this one in Viveza, although of course this is available in all of the Nick Collection. Viveza is all about tonal control, so let's say I want to adjust the tones of these statues here. We can see that they're kind of an aqua blue color, and they're pretty close in color to the blue sky behind them. Here's the new Color Mask tool, so I'll select that, and then click on one of the statues. If I reveal the mask, we'll see what it's selected, and it's done a pretty good job of selecting those statues there. So how does it do that? Well, here's what it's selecting. By clicking on the statue, it's selected this color range, but I can alter that. I can feather it out, so it's a little bit of a more gradual fall off, or I can expand or contract the range completely. I can also separate these two bands. If I click the Unlink button here, now I can control each side independently and really control exactly what gets selected. Disable the Mask Preview, and now I can change things like the saturation just for those statues. For those of us who love making black and white images, Silver Effects has a few new tricks. One of the simplest yet most useful tools is the Color Reference Image. This lets you see your original color image while working on the black and white conversion, which can be especially important when making color masks. Check this out. Let's say I want to make those statues pop out a little bit more, just like I did in Viveza. So I want to use that same color selection mask. I'll use the Clear View tool, use the color selection mask, and click somewhere in here. But where, where should I click? Where's going to have the best reference of that shade of green? Without being able to see the color image, that can be a little bit hard to know where to go. But I can now go down here to original image and see what the original photo looked like. This shows me what the original color version looked like, so I know exactly where to select. Now with that selected, let's take the intensity way up, just for those statues. And of course, as before, we can preview the mask on here. Previous users may have caught on that Clearview can now be applied locally. That's also new. And you can do it to selective tones as well. Look. Let's say I want to increase the highlights in the sky. I'll add selective tones, grab the control line, drag a control line across the sky. Let's get a preview of what that looks like. Looking good. And then I'll take the highlights and raise them up. And now you can see the highlights are only being applied in the sky there. Let's take the shadows down a little bit and make a little more contrast. Looking good. You also may have noticed something else that's a bit different about Silver Effects. The interface now looks more like color effects, with all of your filters to choose from on the left, along with the presets, and more importantly, none of the filters are on the right except for film types, which is always on when you first open it. The recommended workflow is to find a film type look that you want to start with, and then start adding individual filters. If you choose to use presets, each preset will only apply the filters that it's actually using. Again, just like color effects. I'll get rid of the effects I've already applied, and you can see that all that's remaining is film types, which can't be removed. This allows you to choose your base film look that you want to have on your image. Now, as I add individual effects, say clear view, that gets added, but it's the only effect there. And if I add a preset, it'll only add the effects that it needs for that preset. That sums up the most significant new features in Nick Collection 8. Be sure to check out the rest of these tutorials to ensure you get the most from this upgrade.